Bitcoin and altcoins are cooling down their bull run. What will happen next? And could we see a recovery next week? I'll share some charts with you guys. And a major Wall Street firm, Cantor Fitzgerald, is buying a stake in Tether, the world's largest stablecoin issuer. And could we see quantitative easing start again come January? Well, signals are from the new Secretary of Treasury are yes. So let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. Folks, Bitcoin and the altcoins are seeing a pullback, and it's actually a very healthy pullback. When you look at the charts, uh, Bitcoin is currently in the overbought uh, zone for, from the RSI standpoint. So anything above 70 is overbought, anything below 30 is oversold. So in the overbought zone, you can expect pullbacks and corrections. Now, that doesn't mean Bitcoin's going to crash to $70,000 tomorrow. We have to see how how it plays out, right? We got to let the market prove itself and show us what it wants to do. So uh, any type of consolidation here is very healthy in order for us to push higher. And also keep in mind that $100,000 is a psychological barrier, a resistance, and we're going to have to build support levels to smash through that. I think we will, and it could possibly happen next week. I have the thesis that Bitcoin whales want to have Bitcoin hit $100,000 around Thanksgiving so that the dinner table conversation will be around crypto. And we've seen historically that kicks off a big uh, retail FOMO. So I think the whales, the market makers know what they're doing here. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, you know, that thesis may not be something that plays out, but we'll see. I think it has a high probability of playing out. When you look at Bitcoin on the monthly, it's also in the overbought zone. So some sort of cool down is needed here. Once again, it doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to dump tomorrow or even next week. It could go a bit higher. It could smash through 100,000 then do its uh, big correction. Um, and that doesn't mean the bull market's over. It's just these things are normal in a bull market cycle. You go back in history and you look at the charts, uh, nothing goes up in a straight line. There will be corrections and sometimes deep ones, 30%, 40%. I've experienced those. And if you don't understand the indicators, the markets, the technicals and so forth, it can shake you out. So this is why we have to pay attention to the data and not our feelings and our emotions. So if you look at coin market cap, you know, a lot of altcoins are pulling back. And let's use XRP as an example. It was at $1.60, right? A couple of days ago. Now it's at $1.39. And you look at its chart on the daily, the RSI is in the overbought zone. So you, you can see that natural pullback. Very healthy. Nothing goes up in a straight line. So we have to be patient. We have to go through the cycles. And remember, these support levels that are being built are very important for us to hit higher prices because it's not sustainable to keep going parabolic every day, every week, every month. That is not realistic, right guys? So uh, keep these things in the back of your mind, look at the charts, look at the different indicators so that you're not moving by your emotions. Now, analyst Rec Capital highlighted the following about Bitcoin's current pullback. He said, understandably, Bitcoin is finding some resistance at the major psychological level of $100,000. Does Bitcoin need to experience a dip, having only broken out from a sideways range some five days ago? It's debatable. However, at this time, the worst case scenario is that Bitcoin could dip up to 8.5% into the old resistance of $91,000 for a post breakout retest. For context, Bitcoin experienced a 7% uh, dip some 10 days ago. Bitcoin could, of course, produce a much shallower dip, but the key takeaway is that dips are a natural part of the process and dips precede further upside. So guys, I think we can hope that, uh, you know, this dip maybe continues into tomorrow and it finds some sort of bottom and then uh, come, let's say Wednesday, it starts moving. Bitcoin smashes through 100K on Thanksgiving or on Friday whatever it may be, and retail FOMO starts again. We go into December very strong, and then there could be another pullback in, in the middle of December or late December. So these are the different scenarios you want to think about because uh, no one has a crystal ball here. And we look at the charts and we wait to see what it tells us and we form our thesis. Now, of course, there are some people who are shouting from the hills, oh, we're at the top. See, I told you guys, blah, 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 right? But they never show you quality metrics or signals. So uh, based on historical patterns, we are not near the top and multiple charts and data points show us that even the altcoin market cap hasn't even touched its 
old all-time high set back in 2021. So we're nowhere near that. Uh, one of the indicators I like to use is the Pi Cycle Top Indicator for Bitcoin. It's nowhere near to flashing. Uh, also, watching what the Bitcoin whales are doing, uh, they continue to accumulate. So data from Santiment shows wallets with 10 plus Bitcoin continues to increase. So they are buying. Uh, in addition, Bitcoin supply and exchanges continues to go down. That means that they're not moving coins onto the exchanges to sell. We saw that actually back in March and April and May of this year when it was the buy the rumor, sell the news event with the Bitcoin ETFs. So these are the different things you want to look at that it tells the story about what's happening in the market. And look, whales are the ones who control the market for the most part. Yes, retail comes in, but the whales are the ones who set up the whole movement. Um, like it or not. So uh, we are seeing they are buying and they are not selling. And this is also happening on the ETF side. So Bitcoin spot ETFs bought around 34,860 Bitcoin this past week and only 3,150 Bitcoin were mined. Guys, this is why you want to be on the side of smart money and looking at data and, and all these different things. It's amazing what's happening. And one of the things I often share with you guys is stablecoin liquidity because that liquidity goes into the market, into Bitcoin and altcoins. Well, Tether today minted $2 billion in USDT. Guys, over the past six to seven days, they've minted about $7 billion in USDT. If you follow Whale Alerts on Twitter, you will see the same data. You can go check the transaction uh, on the blockchain. They continue to mint a lot, and that's because a lot of whales go through using stable coins, uh, both USDT, USDC, and more. And we continue to see the narrative is changing around crypto, folks. Look at the cover of The Times, which is a newspaper out of the UK. The headline here is, Should Pension Funds Invest in Crypto? <laughs> how times have changed, folks, how times have changed. It's amazing. There's both a global competition and conversation happening about the integration of Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, Bitcoin as a reserve asset here in the United States. Some countries have made Bitcoin a legal tender. Some are uh, buying it and adding it to their balance sheet. And uh, we are just seeing movement towards crypto with the adoption, regulation, and much more. They're not banning it. No one's calling it a fad anymore. Notice how that FUD has disappeared, right? No one's saying, oh, it's a fad. Oh, it's a pet rock, right? Jamie Dime, it's a pet rock. You don't hear him saying those things anymore. So pretty incredible stuff. Now, guys, I want to share something from macro investor Rao Powell. Now, we know Donald Trump assigned Scott Besant as the new Treasury Secretary. He's very pro-crypto. Uh, in reporting that news to you guys this week, I shared a clip of him speaking about crypto and Raul actually knows Scott. So he tweeted the following, Scott Besant, the new treasury secretary, is in favor of a weaker dollar and lower oil prices to drive US and global growth. That is all you need to know. It will drive financial conditions. TLDR, Scott is good for your bags. I've known him for over a decade and he gets it. Raul continued here saying a tad deeper. He understands that we have to try to goose GDP to grow out of debt. I think it fails due to long-term demographics until AI plus robots. Even so, we still have to roll $10 trillion-ish of debt. So we need to lower rates in 2025 before growth can kick in. So let's talk about the major takeaways here. Scott Besant is a billionaire. Uh, he's been investing. I think he's been in the hedge fund space. That's probably why he knows Rao Pal. He's bullish on crypto, and he believes in a weaker dollar. What have we seen historically? The DXY, the dollar currency index, when it is crashing, there's an inverse correlation between Bitcoin and risk assets and the dollar. Now, I know some of you are going to say, Tony, have you looked at the DXY chart recently? Risk assets have been pumping along with the DXY, and I believe that's an anomaly, folks. I don't, I'm not too sure what's happening here, but if you look at the historical patterns, going back to multiple bull market cycles, DXY is crashing, Bitcoin and risk assets are going up. That has been the correlation. And I think this anomaly, this outlier here, it will correct itself. And we're actually seeing the DXY starting to break down here. Um, it has been in the overbought zone as well. So let's see. Uh, it's, it's weird times with these assets. And it could be just because of the election and the shift in some macro factors and more. And maybe investors are front running the collapse of the dxy and uh you know markets are forward looking i'm going to try to see if i can get some experts to come on the podcast to talk about this but this is unique and you go if you go look at the charts yourself 
you will see that inverse correlation from multiple bull market cycles in addition with the stock market. So it's really weird that the DXY has been pumping with this. But to Raul's point, Scott and uh, the Trump administration and so forth, they're going to look to have a weaker dollar so assets uh, take off. And I think they're going to start the money printer again, guys. QE is going to come back. So uh, very insightful post here from Raul and, uh, you know, as far as what we can expect. All right, guys, final news item here. We got a report today that Cancer Fitzgerald uh, has agreed to acquire a 5% stake in Tether for up to $600 million. Many of you know the CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald is Howard Lutnick. He was just appointed as president-elect uh, Donald Trump's Secretary of Commerce. We know that Lutnick has been very close to uh, Donald Trump, part of a transition team. Lutnick was at Bic the Bitcoin conference uh, talking about they're bullish on Bitcoin. They own a lot of Bitcoin. At Davos uh, earlier this year, he mentioned that they were working with Tether and that Tether had the reserves, they had the money. So very big move. And this type of news continues to silence the FUDsters, people who continually spread FUD about Tether. And I've been on record in the past that I believe Tether uh, was not in good shape years ago. I think now that is not the case. Their, their ship is in order and uh, they're working with some of the biggest firms in the world. But the larger theme here, if you step back, it's it's the Wall Street takeover, guys. Look at this. This is a major Wall Street firm. And I think they'll probably want a bigger stake eventually. Uh, but just look, the ETFs being issued by all of Wall Street, tokenization, they want to take over the stable coin issuers. This is why Gary Genser was weaponized to kill the coin bases, the ripples and so forth, so that his buddies on Wall Street, Goldman Sachs and all these guys can come in and take over. But uh, very big for Tether and very big for the future growth of this market. Uh, Cantor is a very big firm and they do a lot in the markets, guys. So uh, huge, huge news here, in my opinion. I'm going to try to get the CEO of Tether back in the podcast to talk about these things. But, but let me share some notes on the article. It could mean Tether receives more political support as Cantor Fitzgerald's CEO, Howard Lutnick, was selected as the United States president-elect Donald Trump's secretary of commerce on November 19th. Giancarlo De Fasani, suspected to be the largest shareholder of Tether, reportedly said words to the effect of Lutnick will use his political clout to try to defuse threats facing Tether, the Wall Street Journal claim. Very, very interesting, guys. Uh, but the larger theme, once again, you step back, it's the Wall Street takeover. So you can see where things are headed. Folks, let me know what you think about this news. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Be sure to check out our sponsor, BitGo, which is one of the top tier crypto custodians in the market. They also have a great retail self-hosted wallet that you can uh, use. BitGo is used by many big firms like exchanges, Bitstamp Exchange, uh, by crypto projects like SWE, uh, hedge funds like Pantera Capital, and ETF issuers like 21 Shares. So if you'd like to learn more about BitGo, go to bitgo.com. Link will be in the description. Also, guys, please sign up for my free email newsletter on Substack. It's 100% free. And grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto, if you haven't as yet. It's available on Amazon in paperback and digital. All the links will be in the description. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all. And I'll talk to you all later.